have the ability to see the future. But if you could see exactly how the rest of your life might play out, would you want to know? And if that knowledge was an option, could life ever be the same again? So this is coming into Brick House now, and it's sort of a typical industrial northern small town, I guess. But it's where I've always lived. From the back seat of the car, Jackie Harrison is giving us a tour of Brig House in West Yorkshire. I'll show you some houses that will make you weep about the price of a um, studio flat in parts of London. But don't tell anybody, everybody will want to come. Uh, shh. Yeah, so it's just behind that silver car, is it? It's not this big detached one. It's a stone one next to it. She's showing us the house where she was brought up by her grandmother. Mum must have been ill all the way through. Uh, my uncle was ill. Uh, my mum and dad were divorced, which not many people were at that time. So you were not living in a normal family. Jackie now lives in a bungalow with her partner. My name's Tony. I am a manager with a local authority, namely Bradford. <laughs> what, are you staying in there a bit now, Mark? And her younger brother, oh, yeah. Mark. And adored dog, Sybil. This is a box that came from my nana's house on Bracken Road. And on the table is a big cardboard box. In the hope of building an extension, there's a bit of a clear-out going on. So I don't know what's in the box, because it's not been um, opened for a long time. It's like that programme, isn't it? Who do you think you are? So that's my mum. Even that, she's probably not 100%. There's a smile, but it's not a kind of completely natural smile. And, and people with Huntington's, they call it a sort of mask. Huntington's disease runs through this family. Jackie's mother, uncle and grandfather all died young with it. They spent their last days in an asylum. So it's a genetic neurodegenerative disease that robs you very, very slowly of everything. The ability to talk, to walk, to move, to think, to swallow. And it does it over a period of many, many, many years. Just before Christmas, Huntington's disease was in the news. After a small trial, it seemed that there could have been a breakthrough. Perhaps the genetic defect that causes Huntington's could be corrected. Perhaps one day there will be a cure for this and for other neurodegenerative diseases, for Parkinson's, for Alzheimer's. And now a rush of people want to be tested to find out if they have Huntington's. Science can give you this knowledge, but there's still no cure. Currently, there is no treatment. The test doesn't tell you when you're going to get it or how badly. It just says that you will or you won't. Our producer, Sarah Bowen, started recording with Jackie back in 2016 when she was mulling over whether or not to have the test. So what is the chance of you inheriting this? If you've got a parent with the gene, a parent with the disease, so in my case my mother, my odds are completely 50-50, or one out of two, or black and white, or complete toss of the coin. Why are you thinking of having the test now, Jackie? Somebody had said that they thought I was very twitchy and had I considered that I might be starting with the disease. I twitch my shoulder and I know I do it. Sometimes you've got a twitchy eye or one time my thumb was shaking or shivering for no reason. I'm being bad-tempered, I'm shouting with people. So you kind of think, is this the start of it? Do you want to live the rest of your life in the hope that you may be free of the disease? Or do you want to toss that coin with the negative of that being that you may find out that you're not free of it and then you've got no hope left? This is The Untold. Yeah, when the Greeks play. When the Greeks? Yeah, you know, invented drama, oh. tragedy. But at that time as well, they didn't just say you're free actors. They also used to wear masks. Jackie's brother Mark, a bright, witty and energetic man, has Huntington's. In search of a Greek about Athens, 
Their mother died when Jackie was 12, their uncle when she was 14, and their grandmother when she was 18. Jackie's been looking after Mark ever since. People that, like my mother, had a career as a teacher, like my uncle had a career as an engineer, like my brother who has got two degrees, are reduced ultimately to people who are not able to do anything at all for themselves and they move about uncontrollably and their communication goes so it's very very difficult for people to understand him which must be horrific Cecil B. DeMille so you're teaching you Cecil B. DeMille then? As you've seen with Mark today it's difficult to understand but he's on the ball with everything that you say and up to date with everything you understand and I, I believe that, that stays with the person right right until the end. Yeah. So the frustration of that must be horrific. Chocolate milk, yeah? yeah now. It's a horrible, complicated nightmare. Till three. Till three. The complications and the difficulties of it are sort of almost undescribable to somebody who doesn't deal with it on a daily basis. So that's chocolate milk, yeah? And then I'll do your sandwich. So what do you do for Mark? He needs pretty much full-time care, so preparing all his food, doing his shopping, doing all the cleaning. Are you having your food now? Yeah, do you want to come in here? As soon then? as you've got clean clothes on, you dirty straight away, he spills his food down him all, all the time. I'll try and entertain him, try and sort out his computer problems, which is a nightmare because he plays crazy computer games that I haven't got a clue about. Organise his medications, organise all his finances. So where was your face? Hair cutting, shaving, uh-huh. help with the toilet, help with absolutely everything. Uh-huh. When did you first notice that you were checking yourself for symptoms? I think you check all your life. I think checking as soon as you sort of realise that it's um, genetic. There's very few days where you're not thinking about it. If I were to ask why you haven't you had the test before, how would you answer? It, it, it's, that, it's that bit of hope. So it leads General Infirmary, Department of Clinical Genetics, and it's the Jubilee Wing. It's Friday the 2nd of December 2016. And Jackie has her first appointment with a clinical geneticist to discuss the possibility of having this test. I think about 25% of people potentially at risk take the test. So 75% of people at risk choose not to take it, even though those same people will still be looking out every day to see if they've got the illness or not. So it's a catch-22 or some sort of horrendous dilemma, really. Do you confirm it or just go through your life trying to live it as best you can, but also at the same time thinking, well, you could still have it? Hi, uh, Jubilee Wing. She's never wanted to take the test before, and whenever she's thought about it, she's backed away. She's possibly thinking that at the age of 50 that she might have got away with it, as it were. The geneticists will say that's not the case. So we're now at the outpatients department with the neurology. Talk to me a little bit about how you felt about actually starting this process. I've not thought a lot about it because of the stress that's going on at home, looking after my brother full time and fighting for funding. My new favourite F word, I didn't know this word funding until recently. I'm learning to drive and it's something I've never done because I can remember coming in with my uncle in the car and being stopped by the police. They thought he was drunk and eventually the car was taken off us. So it's, well, what's the point in doing this, going through all this heartache? And then if I do test positive for this bloody disease, I've wasted a year of my life with this instructor who is um, <laughs> um, interesting, to say the least, plus all of this money. Tell me what you think might happen today. I imagine they'll compile a family kind of history of who had it. And, well, it's everybody in my case. Everybody's had it, apart from me that's untested. And... I think about, I imagine thinking about the implications of what happens with a positive test. Do you feel that you are quite ready for an answer? Um, I don't know. No, yes, no, yes, no, don't know. I don't know how far with the process I will go. This might be the end of it today. I don't know. There's no medical reason really to do the test. We have to think very carefully about a bad result and the impact of that. 
This is Dr Emma Hobson, Jackie's clinical geneticist. It's important to always think that the test isn't now or never and although people have predictive tests for all different sorts of reasons, it's not a good idea to have it because you're looking for a good result. You may say that you've always thought you're going to get it, you've always known that it's there sort of thing, but the reality of actually being told, yes, yeah, I you are, that, that's so quite a big that, step yeah. away. It takes away, then maybe it'll be okay, it might be all right, sort of back up. For an hour, they talk through the pros and cons of getting the result. So in, it depends, it's, it's, it's tossed to the coin completely. So I don't know. I think possibly it's not a good idea. Probably coming up to Christmas is not the best time to do anything, is it? Because it's family, 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 which puts a microscope again onto everything you've lost. So, yeah. Really <laughs> it takes everything. It's taking I everything. Know. I know. I know. From me. I know. You've not had a normal life. I, I don't know what it's like to have a mum and dad. No. I was 12. My, and she was probably ill all of that mm. time. You've not had any of that normality. That's no ability. Not best to do anything no. at this time of year anyway, maybe in the spring. We've made a plan of meeting again, seeing if we can get some other support, things like that. But we'll meet again in a couple of months or so. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Good. Nice to meet you. So. A little bit of you that's disappointed. I, I, that's why there's so much counselling up front, I suppose, because they want you to consider how this is, and I suppose effectively, if you get a positive result, you're getting a kind of death sentence. If it um, takes its course, you know exactly how you're going to die, which is quite a lot of knowledge as a human being to, to take on, I suppose. I don't know, would I throw myself under a bus? I don't know. As Christmas comes, Jackie busies herself looking after Mark. Hello. Yes. Yeah, we've had the information today. She's trying to get funding for the extension so Mark can have an accessible bathroom to use. Make a massive difference to him. Yeah. And trying to raise the profile of Huntington's with her idea, Sybil on tour. I'm not very good at sewing, I'm not very good at crafts. But I've managed to make five, six or seven hundred of these little dogs and it's driving you crazy, picking up bits of thread and bits of felt. Bits of felt She's sewing and sending out hundreds of felt dogs, encouraging friends, celebrities, anyone to photograph themselves with one, just to get people to talk about the disease. They were inspired by our Sybil, of course, and it's a small pink and green felt dog and they've gone all over the world. One went to Ohio yesterday. My friend's just taken one and they've been to Azerbaijan, Kurdistan. Jackie feels yeah. Huntington's has been a hidden, undiscussed disease for as long as she can remember. Like, it's a shameful thing. In America, researchers in the late 20s and even up to recently thought hunting in these families are like tainted by witchcraft. And the language around it is fascinating because it's a devil's disease or it's a curse. There's so many families hiding it. It's this thing about Huntington's, you're a bit ashamed because you're not the normal family in the street. And that passes from generation. So I'm living in a family, in a house with my uncle who's poorly, my mum who's poorly. And um, my mum was fiercely, fiercely independent. A lot of people with Huntington's, they want to do things to, for themselves because, they've, of course, they want to do it for themselves. She's been a teacher, she's had a good career, she's educated, so why can't she go shopping to the shops? I can remember things like the other gala, the Big House Gala, yeah. and I can remember her going to that and she wanted to go and then she'd fall over and have a cut leg and say, you're the one with the mother staggering about at the gala looking like she's a drunk. <laughs> Not like the other ones. <laughs> Which kept going, she kept wanting to go. <laughs> and then you're frightened it'll be you and nobody will want you. <laughs> because you're only going to get the same, so it could just go on. <laughs> For generations. <laughs> and she was so bright. And at 18, I'd have probably gone and been a school teacher or had a career or a life. And at 18, I had to bring up my brother. He just wasn't an ordinary 
a normal life, whatever that is. So it's a, um, it was Star Wars Day yesterday, wasn't it? May the 4th business, so it's the 5th. So we're back in Leeds and beautiful blue skies on the warmest day of the year, perhaps. Christmas turns into spring and Jackie and Tony are on their way to the next appointment with Dr Hobson. At the end of the day, and I think this is the problem, This is, I've thought about this a lot, it's never going to be the right time. So what do you do then? Just live with, without the knowledge or do you crack on and and get that done and at least you can include it in the equation or take it out of the equation. So perhaps I feel more determined in a way to go proceed than I did possibly before. Tell so. me about the extension. Last time you were fighting for funding, I think, or for money for the extension. The funding has finally been secured. So we have a roof and um, after next week there should be windows and everything, which is a massive relief. You were going to sit your driving test? Yes, I passed it, yeah. And every time I get in the car, it's like, this is really bizarre. <laughs> so um, I met my friend for lunch, and um, yeah, it will be useful. So you're flashing. You know, traditionally, we always said to write, but it's whatever's easier. And that's, that's really putting the decision into your hands completely. After another hour with Dr Hobson talking through the impact of a positive and a negative result, Things look like they are moving ahead. The ball is in Jackie's court. Let me know. Either if she wants to go ahead with the test, she can. And so I want it to be really your decision. So you initiate the next appointment. OK. So that's me. That's my address. That's my secretary's email address. Right. Okay, then. Take care, then. Bye. 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 Oh, yes, please. Hello. Hello. Sarah. How do you do? Pleased this to meet you, Sarah. Andrew, an old friend of mine. Hello. Hello. I'm freezing. This is Robert. So, you are. An Robert. even older friend. <laughs> it's the end of the summer. Jackie has booked another appointment with Dr. Hobson. We're all in good voice. But this afternoon at the house, Jackie and Mark do their regular singing corner. It's a karaoke session where friends come round to sing. Good for everyone's spirits. No to feel down. Jackie finally relaxes when she can see Mark having some fun. She's the most. She's he's the most gregarious, open, friendly person that I've ever met. She's completely opposite to me. Young man. <laughs> I'm very uh, quiet and um, sort of restrained and silent, buttoned up. Really, Jackie will make friends with anybody. But you're very compatible. We must be. Seem to have managed to stick around each other for such a long time. Did you ever get married? No, no. I think I would have liked to by now. It's just another thing to organise, and at the moment, everything we try and organise is just so, so difficult. YMCA! <laughs> I'm nothing special. In fact, I'm a bit of a tall. How would your life have been different together if there had been? No HD in the family, do you think? It's almost impossible to think about it now. We'd have done things that normal people do and it's, it's so difficult to picture it now. Do you think that you might have had children? Um, yeah, I should imagine we probably will have done, yeah. Um, definitely. Well, I say definitely, I can't say that, can I? But we would have had no reason not to. It's something that I'm sure Jackie regrets. Would you have children? Um, if I'd not had the gene, I don't know. Was Dif there a time different. in your life that you wanted children, though? I think you possibly sort of toy with it, but I think you just put that away. But you put it away because you've always thought you have it? Yeah. And you wouldn't want to inflict it onto anybody else. But how long have you been with Tony? Um, probably 30 years. Well, he's never sort of pressured or never had a desperate desire. I don't know, he might tell you. <laughs> but not that. <laughs> not that no. <laughs> I think he finds the dog more entertaining than he would children, but I could be completely wrong in that, he might. <laughs> so I say thank you for the music. For Is there a part of you that might change your mind about having this test? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, completely. Yeah, because you tie with it, and I know people that have changed their. Don't mind. When you actually get the yeah, 
But you think you've got it. But you think you've got it anyway. So. I sort of, some days you do and some days you don't. I don't, yeah, some days you think, oh, maybe I haven't. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> we like that one. I will make sure your appointment is the first of the afternoon and I will call you in and I will say, hello, I've got your result. I'm really pleased it's good news or I'm really sorry it's not. We will not be chatting or, or passing the time of day or talking about the weather. We'll just get on and do that. It's Friday the 13th of October. Back at Leeds General Infirmary, Dr Hobson is explaining how, if Jackie does have the test today, exactly how the news will be delivered. If you think there's a risk that it's going to catapult you to, to a level of depression or you're going to even self-harm or anything like that, then we need to step back and have a, a just another think about it, make sure you've got enough support. Dr Hobson carries on being cautious. She keeps checking that this is really the right thing for Jackie. Are you going to be OK, do you think, with that result? Because it's, it's in you, isn't it? If you've got it, whether it's Friday the 13th or Friday the 6th, if you've got it, it's going to happen, isn't it? Mm. So they're, you're just changing that knowledge, which is all along you've known and you've not wanted that knowledge. Have you, have you decided to go ahead? I think... I think cope with that knowledge? I think, yeah, 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 yeah. And do you have a feel for what this result's going to show? No, mm -hmm. no, we're just going to have to wait and see, yeah. Very so this nice is our to consent to form we'll go through together. Okay, so at the top here, this is you, yes, and your date of birth, yeah, yeah. and your address, we've got that right, okay. So if you feel you're ready now to do this, I, just, I need you to put your initials in the two boxes and you sign your name on this line here and then you put your date there. Is that all right? Yeah. There we go. Okay. Good. Um, what do we do about the bus? Do I need to go? We'll, to we'll go out and the nurses the will do that for us. Oh, they will. <laughs> they do that day in, day out. That's their, their job. They're very good. Thank you. Bye bye. Jackie goes through to have her blood taken. My name's Jo. I'm just going to get everything ready. Just squeeze your hands together. It takes seconds. There you go. <laughs> but it's done. Right, thank you. Okay. There's been loads of blackbirds this week and they're obviously getting drunk on these apples because there's been absolutely loads of blackbirds. It's November. The results are due tomorrow. It's been a very long few weeks of waiting. There will be tests for, for everything. I mean, it's coming, isn't it? And I think that's certainly an interesting future because now they're finding markers, aren't they, for genetic breast cancer, possibly in the future Alzheimer's. So perhaps people will be more in our shoes. I wouldn't say they're ready, but if a blackbird's going to beat you to it. Do you think going through this testing process of the last year or so has tested her bravery or her strength? Yeah, yeah. As it gets close to it, yeah, I think she's thinking about it all the time, dreaming about it at night. Hello. I'll be thinking about you tomorrow and I'll be wondering how you're getting on. So. Jackie's friend calls to wish her good luck. She's told only two people that she's had the test. You still don't know if you're doing the right thing to go tomorrow to the appointment. Well, you'll never know that. No, I mean, no. you feel your duty is there to support Mark, mm. isn't it? And you don't want to let him down by being... Unwell yourself. No. And that's your prim primary concern, isn't it? It's not your concern for yourself. No, and that's a difficult thing if it goes that way, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, exactly, because you have to come to terms with that, that you won't be able to protect her. It's scary, Trans. isn't it, to think that you're going to walk through into a room and something that you have worried and wondered about and not known and has been the forefront of your mind for over 40 years, that suddenly someone's going to tell you the answer. Yeah. It's a big thing to do, to 
to sit there and, and wait for her to come down the corridor and give the game away. <laughs> <laughs> she comes past waving and with balloons, you know, all right? Okay, well, uh, I'll think about you. Thank you. you. you take care. Bye, bye, bye. bye. Have you got the parking? Car parking will do. Yes. Way down change. The car on the way to the hospital is very silent. It's like there's nothing left to say. In half an hour's time, Dr. Hobson will open her door. There will be no small talk and Jackie will know the answer about her future that she's wanted, but also been too frightened to know almost all of her life. I've kind of been having funny dreams. You can feel those nerves of stress. Jacqueline, welcome, and um, I've got your result. And it's good news. Okay, so have a look. There we go. Normal, it says on there. Yes, both copies of the gene. <laughs> Very good news. You'd have done if it had been a negative. Uh, a positive. I a don't positive. know what I'd have done. <laughs> you don't think about this day. <laughs> well, it's done. You've done it now. Oh, a mark. Yep, that's what I thought you'd be thinking. <laughs> if you know you're going to be able to look after him. I'm going to look after him. To struggle to take on board that it's good news, but it is. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't negate the suffering of anyone else. No, but, yeah. no, no. It really doesn't. Anybody suffering from it would be pleased for you. <laughs> oh, they will. <laughs> I'm Grace Dent, and this week's producer was Sarah Bowen. <laughs> it's been a long road, hasn't it, to get to this point? It's been a life. It's a yeah. lifetime. Yeah. yeah.